In the beginning, there was the word, the spoken word. My name is Kane Smigo. I'm a national slam poet and the artistic director of a poetry organization called Sacrificial Poets out of Durham, North Carolina. There is a proverb from the Ashanti of Ghana that says, the words from the mouth of an old man are better than an ambulance. And I wish I'd gathered more for my grandfather before he passed. Mm -hmm. I used to drop my grandma off at the nursing home every day to see him, but I rarely stayed long. Couldn't stand the stench. It smelled like rotting knowledge. Sounded like overmedicated matriarchs learning to lean on metal walkers rather than human shoulders. Senior citizens from senior, a Latin word that became sire, meaning your majesty. We no longer treat our old folks like royalty. My grandfather sat down in his throne one day and didn't notice the wheels that had been nailed to the sides until they rolled him out of his palace and into the corner of a nursing home dining room and I would sit with him some days, listening to discarded voices of wisdom scream, bingo, like blasphemy in a hell where the only communion is coated pills and tap water because most of these souls prefer euthanasia to the Eucharist anyways and I have a confession. The other day I was driving late for something less than important when sin spilled from my lips like, get the fuck off the road, Grandpa. <laughs> Tailgating a man I never knew was if he didn't have enough to worry about with the Grim Reaper in his rear view, arthritis in his fingers and a callus on his palm where his late wife's hand used to rest, forgive me, and forgive us for every time we mention the prevalence of Alzheimer's among the elderly when we, we are the ones who have forgotten, I have forgotten, so I'm trying to remember Grandpa who held my hips when I was slowly picking my steps, trying to remember who cradled me in their arms when Pop would bat mouth my mother and I do sadly remember the day I carried my grandfather onto an airplane. And it was a crazy sensation, clutching the seed that held my recipe for creation, like Hercules hoisting a wounded Zeus over his shoulders, lightning bolts bleeding down his back like the swallow tears slipping down my throat, holding him in my arms like one of his battalion buddies. See, he survived World War II, but there are no kamikazes, no Nazis here, just blank faces that do not see him, wearing his wrinkles like war paint, crow's feet like camouflage. It's no wonder you disappear here after 65, and they survive. Clutching the oxygen tubes around their necks like dog tags trying to hold on to their identities when they can no longer hold a nine to five. Told their lives to work less than the minimum wage and this is our shame. I want to have a million sages exhale back into those tubes so we can store their respiration. Then distribute cans filled with carbon dioxide and compressed wisdom and spray some sense into this world like machine guns filled with pennies. And I will take hits of enlightenment daily. We'll drive a little slower down the highway and we'll once again call my elders. Sire, and for my grandfather, I crumpled this poem into my palm, set fire to it, and laced the wind with a cremated blessing to keep your ashes company. We are all natural born storytellers. From the dinner table, to the lunch room, to church pews, and the quad between classes. My workshops are designed to help avid performers and writers or even the most timid and inexperienced who don't identify as either, harness the power of their stories and their identity through text and voice. Because you, only you, are the expert on your story, your history. The only one who can truly tell it the way it was meant to be told. Our stories, our words, our voices are our link to the world. They have the power to inspire, connect, and even transform ourselves and our communities.